Welcome to this service of Book of Common Prayer Evening Prayer. Please feel free to sit, stand or kneel as you feel comfortable. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, Yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders, Spare thou them, O God, which confess thy faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus you our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. And thy mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Psalm 143, verses 1 to 11. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and consider my desire. Hearken unto me for thy truth and righteousness' sake, and enter not into judgment with thy servant, for in thy sight shall no man living be justified. For the enemy hath persecuted my soul, he hath smitten my life down to the ground, he hath laid me in the darkness as the men that have been long dead. Therefore is my spirit vexed within me, and my heart within me is desolate. Yet do I remember the time past. I muse upon all thy works. Yea, I exercise myself in the works of thy hands. I stretch forth my hands unto thee. My soul gaspeth unto thee as a thirsty land. Hear me, O Lord, and that soon, for my spirit waxeth faint. Hide not thy face from me, lest I be like unto them that go down into the pit. O let me hear thy loving kindness betimes in the morning, for in thee is my trust. Show thou me the way that I should walk in, for I lift up my soul unto thee. Deliver me, O Lord, from mine enemies, for I flee unto thee to hide me. Teach me to do the thing that pleaseth thee, for thou art my God. Let thy loving spirit lead me forth into the land of the righteousness. Quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake, and for thy righteousness' sake bring my soul out of trouble. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first lesson is taken from Isaiah chapter 26, verses 1 to 9 and 19. In that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. Open ye the gates, that the righteous nation which keepeth the truth may enter in. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord for ever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. For he bringeth down them that dwell on high. The lofty city he layeth it low. He layeth it low even to the ground. He bringeth it even to the dust. The foot shall tread it down, even the feet of the poor and the steps of the needy. The way of the just is uprightness. Thou most upright dost weigh the path of the just. Yea, in the way of thy judgments, O Lord, have we waited for thee. The desire of our soul is to thy name and to the remembrance of thee. With my soul have I desired thee in the night. Yea, with my spirit within me will I seek thee early. For when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. Thy dead men shall live together with thy dead body. Thy dead men shall live. Together with my dead body shall they arise. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in dust. For thy dew is as the dew of the herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Here endeth the first lesson. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second lesson is taken from Luke chapter 24, verses 1 to 12. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, the Son of Man must de be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words, and returned from the sepulchre, and told all these things unto the eleven, and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, and Joanna, and Mary the mother of James, and other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Then arose Peter and ran unto the sepulchre, and stooping down he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves, and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. Here endeth the second lesson. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, 
as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen. And mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. And bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. Because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us. And take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Almighty Father, who has given thine only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification, grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness, that we may always serve thee in pureness of living and the truth, through the merits of the same, thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Will you pray with me? May the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Let's have a look at the story in Luke's Gospel about the resurrection. The story begins with the obvious Jesus is dead and his followers assume that he remains dead. The women came to the tomb because that is where they saw the body of Jesus placed after his crucifixion and they bring the spices along to anoint the body of Jesus to show proper respect for the dead. The discovery of the empty tomb does not lead to an easy change of perspective. It brings confusion and not clarity. Bodies that are dead presumably remain dead. The best one can do is treat them with respect. And then the women receive a word that runs counter to what they know to be true. Messengers come. They say, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. The women encounter the resurrection through this message. They're told that Jesus has risen, but they do not see a risen Jesus himself. What they have is a word, a message. And that is similar to us, isn't it? 
Now, it seems to me that what the women make of this message is that it is true. Perhaps they think back over what Jesus had told them and it starts to make sense. Perhaps they uh, have a sense of God within them, a, a kind of a, a spiritual sense that what they've heard is true. And what do they do with that truth? Well, they go and tell other people. Now, for other people, the only logical ex response to such a message might be unbelief. Experience says that death wins. The Easter message says, well, Jesus lives. And so when they go back and tell the male disciples, when they have these like contradictory thoughts in their head, it seems only right to carry on affirming what they already knew. They respond um, thinking it's an idle tale and they didn't believe them. It's hard not to read into this a degree of um, prejudice against women. I wonder um, how many times in the Bible uh, a report from men is described as an idle tale. Um, it feels like the word, the testimony, um, the ideas of women are so often diminished. But what does Peter do? He goes and has a look um, at the tomb himself. He runs um, and sees, because perhaps it might just be true. You know, death is death, but the message is so outrageous. Perhaps Peter has a doubt. Perhaps he also remembers what Jesus has said. Now, at the end of this story, we don't really know um, what the male apostles believe. They're obviously doubting the women. Um, but how much do they believe themselves? And I wonder where you find yourself in this story. Are you perplexed by the message of the resurrection? Are you uh, one of the people that's kind of sat there and doesn't bother going to have a look at the tomb because after all it can't be true it's a ridiculous idea are you one of the women that you know you've got people in your life that you want to tell about this amazing story about this amazing resurrection you've got a sense of it being true inside your heart and yet the people around you just mock you and think it's idle talk I think whoever we are and however we respond to the resurrection, God will be gentle with us. But I do pray for all of us um, that we would express how we feel, that we would explore this amazing thing. Because the resurrection was like an explosion. The resurrection turned those disciples from being a, a group of frightened people into a church and a church that expanded across the uh, globe and through time. I'm going to pray for us. Lord, as we offer up our thoughts in our hearts about the resurrection, please come and be the messenger for us. Please draw us more deeply into your truth. And please give us the courage, like the women, to tell that truth. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, high and mighty, King of kings, Lord of lords, the only ruler of princes, who dost from thy throne behold all the dwellers upon earth, most heartily we beseech thee with thy favour to behold our most gracious sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, and so replenish her with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, that she may always incline to thy will and walk in thy way. Endue her plenteously with heavenly gifts. Grant her in health and wealth long to live. Strengthen her that she may vanquish and overcome all her enemies, 
And finally, after this life, she may attain everlasting joy and felicity through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who alone workest great marvels, send down upon our bishops and curates and all congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honour of our Advocate and Mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant thy requests. Fulfil now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore. Amen.